They've got their, uh, their masks on. This is uh, Myra, Ben, Zoe, Levin, and Pearl in Rochester. And uh, increasing clouds the day we will miss out on the rain here in Rochester. Showers will stay well west of here, but look for temperatures on the way to 61. So increasing clouds, a couple of spotty showers west uh, for our Thursday. Uh, the big headlines beyond this uh, looking at frost potential tonight and tomorrow night. We do have some headlines related to that. We're going to be talking about as well as there is a be some pretty cold temperatures headed our way. Frost in Maidshead. We'll hear more in a bit. Yeah, we will talk about that uh, quite a bit over the next few days. All right, thank you, Ted. You bet. We were on the scene of a large law enforcement presence in southeast Rochester. Officers were called to a home in the 1700 block of eight and a half Street southeast around 1115 last night. Police surrounded the home for several hours negotiating with a suspect to come out. We're being told that the incident was domestic in nature, and we talked to officers about how they respond to situations like this during a pandemic. It really hasn't changed our approach from the standpoint of um, how we handle a domestic assault. We changed our approach because of the COVID response, a potential COVID um, interaction or exposure. But as far as how we're actually dealing with the event, really nothing has changed. The suspect was taken into custody without incident. A home is lost in Orinoco after a fire demolishes a trailer. The Pine Island Fire Department tells us the fire started around 5.30 Wednesday night. The mobile home was engulfed in flames when crews arrived. We're told that the home was a total loss, but luckily no one was injured. Crews believe the fire started in the back of the home, but the cause is still being investigated. Minnesota state leaders are reminding people that child visits to the doctors are still important during this pandemic. Although our daily lives have completely changed, officials say it's important to keep up on those visits. It's about more than just keeping up on vaccinations. And well child visits are so very important, not just because it's an opportunity for children to get their needed vaccines, but there, because there are many other um, screening tests that are done at that time that are really important um, to evaluate a child's development as well as um, exposure to things like lead. Parents are asked to stay in contact with their health providers to stay on top of child visits and keep vaccinations up to date. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds at the White House with other governors meeting with President Donald Trump. Megan Zempel is live from her home studio with what was discussed and what this means for Iowa moving forward. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Byron. Our Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds was in Washington, D.C. discussing the state's response to COVID-19. Joined by other governors, Reynolds met with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. Reynolds says she will be telling the nation's leaders about testing and contact tracing being used in Iowa. The biggest topic? Reopening meat packing plants in Iowa, which she pra was praised for both by the president and vice president. Kim, I think we had a great talk with the owners of the plants, the top, top people, big people. These are big companies, actually. You wouldn't believe how many plants they have. And I think it was a very strong talk. And I think they got the message. Uh, so within a week and a half, we should be in great shape, maybe sooner. This is their teammates. This is an essential workforce. They know how important it is to take care of their workforce. And a, a big part of it was providing them the confidence to go back into the facility, knowing that they'd either tested positive and they recovered, or they were on a shift with other employees that had tested negative. And we'll continue to work with them. We've made it very clear if they want to do additional testing, we'll be happy to do that. But they are testing them before they enter the plant. Meanwhile, a Tyson plant will reopen today in northeast Iowa with limited operations. The Waterloo plant closed April 22nd after more than 400 employees tested positive for coronavirus. Reporting live, Megan Zempel, KTTC News. Thank you, Megan. More than half of Minnesota's hospitality businesses will close for good in the next two months if the current economic climate continues. That is the grim outlook from the Trade Association Hospitality Minnesota, which represents 2,000 restaurants, hotels, and resorts. It also says 14% of food service businesses have already closed permanently. The town of Lanesboro thrives off tourism, but with fewer visitors and shutdowns, shops are struggling and not getting much aid. I don't think Lanesboro can survive another bad year. I, it just, 
to be honest with you, and it's scary. You only save for your off season. I, that's about all that comes in, and that's what you're trying to do is just save for your off season. She's hoping that a successful summer will keep the Little River General Store in business. The store does not plan on offering tubing or kayaking because of challenges with social distancing. Other businesses in town will be offering that service. And while the bed and breakfast have closed their dining rooms, most of the town's restaurants are open for takeout. All in-person Memorial Day celebrations across the state are canceled for this year. For most veterans, it's a big day to commemorate those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Olmstead County Veteran Services is still operating and offering many services to those in need. But for Army vets, not having any in-person